You mentioned Rubio. He currently plays for the Cavaliers. And the Cavaliers have been the surprise team of the NBA. J.B. Bickerstaff is at the forefront of that coaching this team. What are the odds that he wins coach of the year? I'll start with you, Drew. Right now, I have him at plus 1,000. You got... Plus a thousand is not that bad. <laughs> I gave actual odds that right does, now. That's, that's, right now, you actually look it up. He's like plus twelve hundred. He is plus twelve hundred. So I got him at plus a thousand, given the fact that the Cavaliers should not be in the position they currently are. You have Steve Kerr, who I'd probably have ahead of him. Probably Billy Donovan. Also, I feel like I'm forgetting one of the team. Oh, I'm Monty Williams. There you go. That's another one that I probably put above him. Other than that, I think he's fourth right now. The Cavs. What was the three? I'm sorry. So you got Steve Kerr, Monty Williams. And Billy Donovan. Quinn Snyder, none? Again, I'm not willing to give Quinn Snyder... We're going to talk about it later, so I'm not going to go too in-depth. I'm just going to say, I need to see in the playoffs. That's all I'm going to say for now. That being said, the Cavs have been the biggest surprise this season in the best way possible. Sexton went out, and I'm sure Cavs fans weren't the most excited given the fact that Sexton was their number one uh, scorer at least. But then it was an opportunity for Darius Garland that the door was open and he had a chance to seize an opportunity. And he 100% has up until this point, definitely becoming an an all-star candidate, no doubt about it. He has taken a leap, not only facilitating the basketball, but more importantly, scoring the basketball, averaging about 19 points per game this season. Sexton going out, his game has just ascended ever since that injury happened. It's unfortunate that it took Sexton's injury for for Garland to be on unlo- unleashed but then you have Evan Mobley who has just been not just great cuz offensively sure Evan Mobley's been fantastic but even better defensively you guys just started randomly shitting on defensive rating but here he is 101.9 defensive rating that's top 5 in the NBA no defensive rating is is a good stat to measure team performance and five man lineups but individually it's not it's not a good stat cuz it's not an individual stat I guess it's like it's like the quarterback. It's like it's like the wins is a quarterback stat for me. Defensive rating. I don't think win. I don't think wins is a quarterback stat. The same way I don't think defensive rating is a, is a specific player stat. I'm shocked because I've never ever heard us slander defensive rating up until today. I'm not slandering defensive rating. It's just not. You, a player you understand stat. what I'm saying? It's like we don't. We didn't. We have. For example, like it. field goal percentage, three point percentage. That's a specific, that's specific player stat. Yes. Defensive rating is not because that is measured by when you're on the court with four other people. So it doesn't account for I feel like a lot of things. If you're a big man, defensive rating is more into account than for a regular perimeter player. I think it's just more about lineups. Here's a point though. I think defensive rating for big men is a little bit, you can kind of be a little bit Because they hold it down. Yeah. But you pair his defensive rating of 101.9 to Jared Allen's, who's a, a freak of nature this season. I think he's number number three right now in defensive rating. Draymond, number one. Rudy Gobert, number two. Jared Allen's been the surprise of the season. 17 points per game, 11 boards per game, 1.5 uh, blocks per game, shooting 70% from the field, shooting 71% from the line for a big man that's not bad by any means. Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, that combination where you can have Mobley be a little bit more versatile of a defender, and then Jared Allen's just holding it down in the block. The two of them have just been have made it hell for other teams to come into to drive the ball to the bucket. Those two have been the standouts, and obviously Darius Garland's ascension. I think I would not put bigger staff in the coach of the year candidacy with the Kerr, with the Billy Donovan, with the Monty Williams, because people were questioning for the Suns. People were questioning whether they could repeat, and they've done more than that. They've been arguably the best team in basketball. Devin Booker's gone out, and we've seen them take a little bit of a step back, but that's their best player offensively. That was bound to happen, but I think once he's back, we're going to see the Suns be the regular Suns that we know. Billy Donovan would be number two for me. The Bulls had high expectations once they brought in DeMar, once they brought in uh, Lonzo, that that lineup of Lonzo, DeMar, Zach Levine, Vucevic, rest in peace, Pat Will. Obviously, he's not dead. He's just not playing for the rest of the season. There was some expectations, but not the expectations of them being the number two or the number three seed in the East, and they have accomplished that. The duo of Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan has worked instantaneously. They've been great. So I'm going to give a little bit of credit to, to Billy Donovan because he's gotten that that group of guys to mesh very quickly. You have Steve Kerr three. I'd have Steve Kerr three. I think that the team has been together for so long. 
It's not that I'm taking anything away from Steve Kerr because Steve Kerr has been great, yes. Dude, where are you going with this? All I'm saying is I've come to expect this out of Golden oh, okay. State. That entire bench is brand new. In, in what sense? I uh, mean, last they're new. They're new really players. Bielitz is a new player. Otto Porter's a new yeah, player. Yes, okay. Kaminga's a new player. JTA is it? Yeah, JTA, JTA is it. I mean, he was there last year, but right? The, but, but the starting line is basically the exact same from last year. Jordan Poole is taking a huge step, though. Oh, for sure. And that's credit to Jordan Poole. Okay, I get what you're saying. But the Warriors have the best record in the NBA right now. And that's also due to the fact that Devin Booker's gotten hurt. No, they to were they were above Phoenix. Phoenix ah, bro, but, but, bro. but they were, the Suns were cooking. It was a tie game when he <laughs> went out. And, but then they still won that game. And then they got smoked out. But because he wasn't there. You, you're you losing 26 points per game. I mean, they got smoked out, though. They did, they did. You guys did the yeah, thing. Yeah, but you guys have been playing great as a team. You guys have been doing this for years, though. Not last year. And last year, I mean, Steph was hurt that. for a while. But then Steph was in, and you guys are just a different beast. You talked about the Suns taking a step back. They're 5-2 and two without Devin Booker. One of those losses was against Golden State. And mm-hmm. they lost to... No, they actually beat the Blazers. They Blitz. lost to... Um, I'm blanking, I'm blanking. I remember. I mean, it's just been two. It's been the Warriors and somebody else. I'm blanking. But they're 5-2 the and two without no, Devin Booker. Their offensive rating has, has come down severely. Yeah, but they're still five and two. Uh, no, of course they're they're a great team as a whole for sure. Their offensive rating has dropped. That's what I was thinking of. Right? So okay, have, what was your ranking? Two. Just a, so two. I have I probably have Monty Williams number one. I have number two Billy Donovan. Number three Bigger Staff. Number four Kerr. Me personally, look, oh, Kerr at four. Me personally, oh my gosh. Me personally, you were okay. look. Me I, personally, I, I, look, okay. look. For, coming from me and Riv, I would understand it because. <laughs> We had Golden State as one of the top teams in the West. Of course, you didn't. What do you mean? I still had them number four, but they're That's, one. They're one, and they have. Okay, they're gonna I, on I, a sixty win pace. I understand because defensively they've been different. All right, you know, Tokyo, look, Tokyo. I think Steve Kerr right now is the odds-on favorite. I think Bickerstaff is four. Monty Williams, he's done a heck of a job. Warriors best record in the NBA. Suns second best record in the NBA. Billy Donovan, the Bulls are second in the East right now, and. They've taken a huge jump from when they were last year. Bickerstaff is four. And I want to give him a slouch because he's been amazing. And he actually has this mantra. He has words that the team uh, that the team uses to describe their play. And they use it as basically the words for their season. It's details, toughness, together, together, compete, and one more. They they have that planted around the locker room, and players use that to, you know, motivate their day-to-day routines. And Kevin Love has said details is the most important word for these young players because young teams lose because they lack those little details. And he thinks details are the most important thing. But those words are plastered around the locker room. He's done a great job. You're right. Jerry Allen has been the ascension this year. He is going to be an all-star. Darius Garland, I hope, is an all-star. I hope he doesn't get snubbed. Jared Allen has 8, 20, and 10 games. I mean, he's crazy. He has been... Amazing this year. He has the most blocked dunks in the past five seasons. Uh, the two people behind him are McGee and Andre Drummond, both former Cavs centers. So Cavalier centers are showing out right now on that list. And Isaac Okoro has been a pleasant surprise. The past four games, he's averaged 18 and a half points, 3.8 rebounds, shooting 70% from the field and 58% from three. He's had a bunch of highlight reel dunks. Isaac Okoro has been really good. But I think right now, Bickerstaff is fourth. He, he should be fourth in this race. I know the Cavs were not expected to do this. By any means. But you have to have the best record to win Coach of the but Year. But like we had... Or do our, something outstanding. I, I 100% get what you're saying. But in, in all, all of these our coaches, preseason rankings, we had the Cavs bottom three. And they're... I didn't. I said playing, bro. All right, we all had their ceiling I as said, being a playing team. I wouldn't team. be surprised. Yes, if they make but the in our final rankings, we had them in our top and our bottom three. He might be right. Yeah, I know. I'll I have, know I'm right. I'll have to. See. I said I wouldn't be. I know what I, I said. I wouldn't be surprised if Correct. they make the play. Correct. That's, that's what I said. We all said that their ceiling is a playing team, but we all had them in our bottom three. So for them to overachieve in this facet, this quickly. Oh, this is gonna, so what's your list? Steve Kerr is one. Monty Williams is two. Billy Donovan is three. Listen, I hundred percent. I hundred percent understand having Kerr one, but they've done it. I have to go based off the Coach of the Year award. You know, I have to go Kerr at one. Obviously, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give some love to every coach. You know, Kerr at one. Obviously, I think I got Billy at two. You I know, like I that. think what he's done 
it, with with the 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 narrative around this season was that how is this gonna work? You know, how is Demar Definitely. and Zach gonna fit Big Vooch? And I feel like Billy Donovan has, and not only made them fit, but he's gotten outstanding contributions from Javante Green, Ao Dusuna, like he. Derrick Jones Jr. when he came in, Tony Bradley in the spurts he's got in. So I think you got to show some love. And he's got this team playing defense and being a high-powered offense. So I got Billy at two for me. Of course, Monty Williams at three. You know, people, like you said, the narrative was, are they going to do this? You know, even when Devin Booker went out, they were still winning games. You know, this team is still, they lost two straight and then went on like a big. They started eating. Yeah, they started. I, I don't know. I don't remember how many exact games, but it was a lot of games that they won in a row. So you got to put Monty Williams in that top three. JB at four for me, but I feel like, and this is um, this is maybe being but me being a little biased, but I feel like JB is four for me, but Tyron Lewis right behind him for me. I feel like with JB Brickerstaff, you have to look at it, and people thought this team would be bad. You know, people, you know, the narrative was why is he building this big lineup? You know, this big lineup with a bunch of centers and a bunch of big men, and he's turned it around and turned this team into one of the best defensive young teams mm -hmm. in the league. You know, this team is young, and he's turned them into one of the best defenses in the league while also being a solid offensive team, you know, middle of the packed offensive team. So I think that's impressive, you know, him having the personnel basically the same as last year just with a rookie, him having everybody playing hard, like you said, putting all that knowledge into these young players, and Kevin Love also – in that leadership, I think that's cool. But I think, like I said, JB is probably right there, but Tyron Lue's right behind him because losing Kawhi was big, and he still got this team winning games without Paul George, without Marcus Morris. Like he's losing guys, but they still win games. I did have them bottom three. I did have them bottom. I had I had them thirteenth. I understand. Listen, Riff had them fifteenth. Yeah, it's not. Now I'm playing. You didn't, I don't I know. Did? What you, oh. I don't know what you did. <laughs> It's not. No, I think I had Magic 15. Yeah, no, definitely Magic. 15. I, I wouldn't try to lie on something like that. It's just what our expectations were. They we. They were a year away, at least in my eyes, and they're overachieving and doing it this year. Yeah, so that they're simple. beyond that. And it's I mean, like they have more wins than the Bulls, who are the number two seed. Hey, hey, hey! Three games got canceled. Relax. Exactly what I'm, uh, that's what I was oh, okay. gonna say. Bulls have had their games postponed, but they have more wins than the Bulls. They have one less win than the Bucks, but they have the same amount of losses. Currently, they're on a five-game win streak. Eleven and six at home. Nine and seven on the road. Third in defensive rating, second in opponents' points per game, mm. and they have won 13 games by 10 plus points this season, which is the most in the East and the most since the 17 18 season for them Oof. when LeBron was there. Speaking about LeBron, is there any chance LeBron is looking at this Cavs team and how they're playing and saying, maybe I want to go there <laughs> next and win one more championship for Cleveland? No. That would be insane. He said he's retiring a Laker. Let's he's going to retire a Laker. He's going to retire at LA. I just I personally don't even think this I think this team doesn't even like they they want to rob their young guys. I think they're cool with that. It's at. LeBron. Like what what is it's he LeBron. on about? What do you want about? It's what are you LeBron. About? What do you mean? Like I I thought you were about to say like yeah, we don't need LeBron. No, I wasn't. Did I say that? That's what it sounded no, like no, you were about to say. say. Who what the hell? That's LeBron, bro. I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say that, but they have here. a hole at the 3 though. Who? The Cavs. Oh. That Cavs season doesn't fit LeBron. How so? Too many bigs. He doesn't do big what lineups. Do you mean? He likes shooters he the, everywhere. He had AD and Dwight in the same lineup. Not in for Did a season want? in spurts. And but even like, then, he, he still, still had shooters it. next to him. KCP, you know. But Mobley can stretch. To a, uh, not as he's a rookie. And Garland can facilitate, so you don't really need. Well, we're not talking about now. I, it wouldn't be now. He can't about get traded. Years. Talking about next season. LeBron, maybe next season or I mean, the year after. after, is like, okay, this Cavs team is complete. They need one more player. I'm going to go join them. 